So a little while ago, I was thinking about diffuse axonal injury. It's a very common injury that we see, and you know, I, there's some dogma that I think we need to discuss. So the thing is, DAI, or diffuse axonal injury, is sold to us as a coup contra coup injury. The brain is sloshes forward, and it sloshes back, and it hits the front of the skull, and then it hits the back of the skull, and all kinds of injuries occur. You know, so this, the thing is that's weird about this is that the brain is actually in a really tight compartment. There isn't a lot of room to move around. And if you look at scans uh, or even autopsies, you can see that the brain mostly fills up the space of the skull. I guess in some circumstances where somebody is very old and have a lot of atrophy, well then maybe there's room for the brain to slosh around. But in reality, the vast majority of patients we see don't have a lot of room. And in, smacking into the inside of the skull just doesn't seem to be the big predominant reason why these patients are sick. And when you look at the scans, if the patient was injured because of a contusion, because the brain was sloshing around, you'd expect to see something on the scan. And most times what we see with patients who have had a devastating brain injury is there's only really a small amount of bleeding in certain locations in the white matter. And the patient's completely unconscious with no hope of recovery. This isn't, this, this isn't a coup contra coup type injury. There's something else going on here. The epiphany I had was when I was watching a TED talk by David Carmelo on why helmets don't protect football players from concussions. And in that work, he was using mouth guards with sensors in them to model what was happening to the brain during impact by football players and the concussions that they received subsequently. When you look at the injury pattern or the strain pattern that you would see on in his work, it mimics very closely what we see in patients with severe diffuse axonal injury. And I think that in our case, this is probably just a matter of degrees. Now his argument was that concussions are a rotational injury, not an impact injury, and that's why helmets don't protect you. And if rotational injury is the source of the problem, then torque is an important factor that you need to understand. Torque is the force of a rotation around a fixed axis. The factors that are in play are the moment of inertia and the angular acceleration. So angular acceleration is how fast uh, acceleration the, the, uh, the, the object is moving around its axis of rotation. And the moment of inertia is the fancy way of saying how heavy the weight is and how far away it is from the source. So the equation for torque is mass times radius squared times the, um, times the angular acceleration. The units of measure, which we'll talk about in more detail in a, in a very near future, are kilograms per meter squared multiplied by radians per second squared. And these factors are going to be important to talk about in a few minutes. This leads me to believe that DAI is much more a rotational injury, and this coup contra coup mechanism that we always talk about is probably far less important. Not completely, perhaps, but definitely far less important. Can torque then explain the injury pattern that we see in diffuse axonal injury? In our model, let's consider the brain to be a long stalk of axons attached to a heavy skull with all of the meat of the gray matter on top of it. Now, the base of the, of the, of the, of the neck is actually where our axis of rotation is. Now, the amount of force when you're struck generates an amount of torque. But the amount of torque that's generated will vary as you get further and further away from the axis of rotation. Now, if you remember that torque is equal to the distance multiplied by the mass, we don't change the mass, nothing changes with the mass. But as the distance changes squared, the torque increases. Now, if the torque that is experienced at a particular level in the brain is greater than the maximum tolerable torque that that piece, that, that portion of the axon can tolerate, then the axon shears. There would be no injury if the torque that is generated is less than the maximal tolerated torque um, uh, as you go lower down. When the injury is not as severe or the force is not as severe, the amount of torque that's generated may never reach the maximum tolerable torque that would cause the axon to shear. And if that, if that level of torque is above the level of the brain, effectively, in, in space, 
then there would be no injury to the axons and there would be no diffuse axonal injury. This is the reason why higher forces tend to involve deeper and deeper white matter structures. A small amount of force will cause injury primarily to the top parts of the brain because that's where the torque is uh, exceeded the maximal tolerated uh, torque. But as the amount of forces increase, the amount of uh, torque increases as well and it also then starts to involve those deeper white matter lesions. So this is why we will see injuries that involve the corpus callosum first, but if they get more severe, then they go down deeper into the thalamus, midbrain, and then into the pons and the, and the uh, medulla, which all then cause devastating injuries. It's because of the amount of force that they've experienced is much higher that the injury pattern goes deeper and deeper. And it's not the contra coup injury because that's all up here, not down here. Understanding the impact that torque has on diffuse axonal injury and the rotational injury that it causes can also then help you really appreciate why you should really wear a seat belt and airbags are really important for saving your lives. It's no coincidence that over the course of the last uh, decade, we've had a significant decrease in mortality associated with cars who have been in large collisions that have mostly destroyed the vehicles. And yet the passengers are usually relatively uninjured. And I think that part of the reason why is torque. The key here is the torque equation, especially the angular acceleration component. Now remember, angular acceleration is radians per second squared. So what this means that if you can slow somebody down, even just a little bit, you may not prevent the impact, but by decreasing the speed just a little bit, the, the squaring factor will have a significant impact on the acceleration that's being ex experienced and therefore the torque that's being generated. And again, if you can get the torque that is being generated to fall below the threshold for shearing axons, then you don't get any injury. The key here is airbags and seat belts slow down the rotational component of the impact. It won't stop you from hitting anything, but it will slow you down. And even if it slows you down a little bit, that's probably enough to save your life and prevent serious brain injury. This is also why helmets don't do anything to prevent concussions or DAI. They're just not built to slow down the head. Arguably, they actually increase the torque because they increase the weight higher up on the head, away from the axis of rotation. But they do protect very well against the direct impact, and I would never suggest that you should not wear a helmet. Just remember, the helmet will protect you against the direct impact, the smacking against the, wall, the floor or the other player, but it won't do anything to slow down the head as it's rotating and suffering significant torque. The bottom line, DAI, or diffuse axonal injury, is mostly a torsional rotational injury. Now I'm not saying that head injuries that involve diffuse axonal injury don't have a contusion component. You can, you can see contusions when patients have suffered severe brain injuries, but I think that that's from the actual impact and not from this sloshing around nonsense that we see uh, in the official dogma. And I think if you understand the basic physics of torque, this really helps you understand the mechanism of the injury of diffuse axonal injury. Understanding the basic physics of torque and torsion and rotation helps you understand the injury patterns that you can anticipate when you see somebody with diffuse axonal injury. And it also explains why you really should wear your seatbelt or use your airbag.